hi guys how you doing welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are doing good because i'm doing amazing you guys i have been so ashamed to share this story okay because i don't know where to start from i don't even know how to start shipping my mouth to tell this story but i just have to tell the story okay because i put my life out there already so it is what it is anyway so last year towards the end of last year i traveled to south africa with youtube it was such a fun experience however before the experience and after it you know a lot of things happened and i'm going to be sharing that with you guys today okay if you are watching me then you will see that my passport came out really late like i did a lot of running around that period trying to get my passport then i traveled and the flight was i think three flights going only three flights yeah we took three flights going and before flights i can't remember but it was a lot of flights going and about five flights coming back right Four and a half flights technically because the third flight we stopped over at abuja before we now went to lagos then from lagos i now left that same deal like almost immediately after i now left for the airport and you know came to port harcourt that night i got home by 9 p.m or so i was so stressed out i was disgusted i hadn't had my bath it was like almost a 24 hour journey i hadn't had my bath i was disgusted i was not feeling fine um although i started I started feeling sick from the trip so but it got it got worse on the day of traveling i was really really sick i don't even know looking back now i don't even know how i managed to you know hold myself um yeah go back to Port Harcourt, um, had to help organize a um, baby shower for my friend and i couldn't even attend the baby shower that's to tell you how stressed out i was i organized a baby shower that i could not attend like <laughs> so a lot of things happened you know that period i was feeling really sick only for my period to when my period was supposed to come i i knew i i was just i felt off right i felt off my body felt off i just felt like something was wrong but i couldn't tell i just felt okay maybe because i'm feeling sick right because i kept feeling dizzy i was always dizzy i was always out of breath i was always tired i was always just not in the mood you know so i kept feeling that way but i just chucked it you know down to I mean, I've been sick, so it's just confirmation of the sickness. Even as of right now, I'm not sure what exactly was wrong with me then, but I just knew that I wasn't feeling fine. Okay, so when my period was supposed to come, my period did not come. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, my period did not come. And I have never had a an extended delayed period, maybe one or two days, but my periods for the most part always come right on time, okay? The only time I've really missed a period was when... I was pregnant right so the five days delay <laughs> i didn't find it funny i did not find it funny i decided to go and get tested i went and did a pregnancy test and you know full blood count full blood full blood counts or full blood counts test whatever anyway they took my blood and they did all kinds of tests on me the pregnancy test came back negative the full blood count test every other thing was okay but my red blood cells i think I forgot what the result was but my red blood cells was like on the on the low end right it was on i was it wasn't low per se but it was just on that marker for this as in anything lower than that would have i would have been i would have had low blood count right yeah i think that's what it means whatever so i was happy i was rejoicing in fact when i got that test there hey the way i jumped the way i was so happy i was just like ah thank god though. okay now but where is the period the period that delayed where did you go to i waited again Two more days it did not come day seven day eight day nine my parents did not show up i was like okay something is going on here and i went and bought pregnancy tests as well like the, the strip ones even before then i had but i wasn't i think after i did the test that said negative i did not test again so i now tired testing with you know the pregnancy strips and i would test and some would be negative and some would be positive okay even though the positive was always very faint positive but some were negative some were positive Two different types of tests no three different types of tests you know if i eventually use one i kept getting you know very very faint positive while the other ones i kept getting negative okay and i was devastated you guys i was broken hey god i say how i want they can speak this english on youtube and tell people that hey guys i'm pregnant again my iud fell off i did not go back and put it again because I don't have sense. At that point, I had it in mind that I wasn't really careless, okay? So, there was really no reason for me to be pregnant. But again, things happened. I wasn't careless and I got Sophia. So, yeah, there's really no 
point thinking that oh as long as you don't have best control in place you can get pregnant okay so i was just scared i was like how would i come out not even scared i won't call it fear i okay i had fear for what was to come but i had more of shame very deep shame like this so hey i said i would like tell my parents this this gist even though i mean eventually everybody's going to be happy we're going to celebrate the child blah 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 but how letting my parents that I, I don't know where pregnancy comes from. I don't know what causes pregnancy. Because that's, that's what it means at that point. You know, one oops baby is an oops baby. But after that, it's like, okay, can you really say it was a mistake if if you, you are getting another another one, okay? <laughs> because pregnancy is not something that we don't know how it happens. We know what causes it and we know how to prevent it. So if if you're getting it anyhow, anyhow, then it means that you, something is wrong with you, you know? Shame almost finished me. Oh, let me tell you guys, I was, I was, I had deep shame. And I, when I, okay, but aside the shame part, okay, even though yes, yeah, shame was an emotion I felt, I think what I felt more strongly was fear and, you know, I was just devastated. I just felt like I can't do this anymore. Like I can't, I can't just go down this road anymore. Like I don't want to have another child. Having three children is a lot for me. You know, I, 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 I've not had enough time to even enjoy Sophia. I'm not going to bring another baby. Sophia will not now enjoy her life the way she's supposed to. Like, I had so many thoughts at that time. I felt really bad. And the 10 came, the 11 came. And I just told myself, you know what? Because at that point, I think I checked and I found out that I had gotten to that six weeks point of doing an actual scan. I knew that I had gotten to the mark where if I do a scan, I'll be able to see things clearly, okay? Doctor will be able to see things clearly and tell me whether or not I was pregnant or whatever was going on with my body, okay? So I called my doctor's clinic and I booked an appointment to see my doctor, okay? But before then, my husband was not finding it funny either, okay? Because if you guys know my gist, you know that my husband was okay with having just one child. In fact, after Cora, he was like, let's it, let's, let's just enjoy our lives. And I was like, no, I wanted, I, I never wanted a child without a sibling, especially if I could help it, right? So, um, so having two children for him was even a stretch. Then having a third one was like, what was going on here? Then imagine having a fourth child, you guys. I was just, I felt bad for him. I didn't know what to say to him, to be honest. I don't even know how we even had conversations that period because we were moving on like things were normal, but I could tell that beneath, <laughs> beneath all this all this smiling and gisting and talking, beneath it was a lot of, you know, pressure that was going to erupt at some point. Um, you know, when I go and meet him and talk to him, he would just be advising me and he was telling me I should stop worrying that I'm not pregnant. If at some point he was saying maybe I'm having a, pre 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 menopause symptoms and stuff like that i was like ah if, if that's it then i then better for me okay because i'd rather have that than you know be pregnant so that's what he kept saying but when i was seeing the positive test i was like oh my god this man is in denial <laughs> i'm gonna hate to bust this bubble but this man is actually in denial okay because he kept telling me don't worry you're not pregnant okay but at times that i would i i, I would see that he would be very you know quiet he'll be very solemn <laughs> i know him and i know that i know when things are off with him okay even though he tries to act normal i know when things are off with him so i felt really bad for the man i was like what what is what kind of wahala is this why didn't i just go back and go and put this iud back because up until that period even though I, I knew i didn't want another child i hadn't gone to put the iud back and that's because again Saying grand put IUD back is not like it's not a walk in the park, okay? It's not that easy, it's not that simple. Knowing what comes with it, okay? The extended period and all that. Anyway, you guys know this gist. So hmm, I now prayed though. My husband said, I'm sure he prayed, even though we didn't pray together about it, but I'm sure he prayed where he was. Me, I just prayed, like God, please. I beg, you know my heart desires, eh? You know what I really want in my life. It's not a baby, God, please. Okay, no, we didn't pray, but what we did was me and my husband were just saying, God, I beg, just there are many people around the world that need children. Whatever baby you want to give us, please take that baby and go and bless another family that really needs it because it's not us, okay? We're not the ones. <laughs> Today is not the day and we are not the ones, okay? And um, yeah, because I'm going, I'm turning 35 this year, by the way, okay? Yay! <gasps> I can't wait. I'm turning 35 this year. I, I intend to do so much for myself this year. Um, I want to go on vacation, I want to have fun, I want to really celebrate my 35th birthday and a child is not in that, in that, um, what is the name, in those, in the plan, okay, a child is not in the plan. Anyway, to cut the long story short, after I prayed that prayer, I just told myself, you know what, I have to just move on, whatever will be, will be, okay, I will go for my scan, if they tell me you are pregnant, so be it, I will start the journey. And if you tell me you're not pregnant, then I will quickly put the IUD immediately, you know. So, 
after prayer prayer i just you know moved on i just told myself nothing they happen okay nothing they share i think i just had peace within me that you know i'm going to be fine whatever the case is i'm going to be fine no need to panic no need to start stressing what are you stressing for like you did it you did it baby is dead baby is dead nothing you can do about it that was how i now decided to move on and yeah and then on day 12 i woke up and i saw my period and i was like Thank you, Jesus. Okay, before that day 12, I noticed that that test that kept telling me positive, I kept trying and the lines kept, you know, getting fainter and fainter and fainter. You know, even the other test, I wasn't seeing any lines at all. But that particular one that kept telling me positive, I, the lines were getting fainter and fainter. So, right now, the truth be told, right now, I don't know what's happened. I don't know if I was pregnant and I lost the pregnancy. I don't know if it was chemical pregnancy. I don't know if it was phantom pregnancy. I don't know if it was the tests. And if that's the one I, I think is more likely, I feel like those tests we are faulty because um uh, yeah, I kept buying them from the same place, that particular brand. I bought it from the same place. So maybe that batch they had was faulty. I don't know. I've never had false positive before in my life, so I can't tell, but I've heard of people that had false positive. So my strongest inclination or what I believe the most is that that particular test was faulty uh i don't know if it was just the stress i also suspect that all the stress i went through plus the sickness was what affected my period because it was a really serious sickness so like now that i'm looking back i'm like i tried though because i was trying to act normal i was trying to do things but my body was really down and in fact that whole issue is part of what made me decide that this year for for real for real for sure for sure this year i am going to get to my ideal weight okay because I feel like that sickness hits me more because I'm not I'm not fit and I'm overweight. I feel like that's why that sickness hits me more. I'm just guessing, okay, but I, I felt sicker than normal. It wasn't just normal malaria or whatever. I felt really sick. All the medicine I was taking at some point, they were not even working for me. So I felt really, really sick. But yeah, so I feel like it's the sickness plus the stress plus the faulty test that made me feel like I was pregnant. But whatever the case, I'm just thankful to God that I am not pregnant but stop on me i've not still gone back to put the iud i was supposed to see my doctor this week to talk about stein of womb time my tubes because i'm tired of every other type okay the only reason why time of tubes was out of the picture for me before was because i didn't have children through cs so i didn't want to start doing separate surgery to try and tie tubes i was like nah i don't want anybody to cut me open just to tie tubes but right now um, I'm going to talk with her. I'm going to also do my research and just see how it is done on somebody who is not pregnant. I mean, who did not just give birth or whatever. I would like to see how it is done and, you know, make my decision and get it done. Then my sister told me something eh, that kind of, you know, helped me move on too. My sister told me that, yes, it's true that um, I should have gone back to do my IUD. I should have gone to do best control. I should have this. I should have that. However, knowing what I know about how there are so many stories about how birth control can cause um, uh, cancer and stuff like that, all those stories, I'm not saying they are true, okay? I'm not saying they are true, but I've heard the gist. In fact, that period, I heard about somebody who um, did not know that she had one something that's, that was like a like something that increases your chances of having cancer i think that was it is she didn't know she had it and then she now went and did hormonal iud and it basically just made her have breast cancer she even had a mastectomy and stuff like that her story was really grim and really sad my sister wasn't telling me about how you know i'm here now feeling bad feeling sad talking about oh uh, sophia will not have enough time to enjoy herself uh, my family dynamics is going to change i won't be able to do my birthday this and that this and that however if it was cancer uncle won't your family change even more? How would that one be? How would my family cope? You know, that's even a even worse situation to be in. My family is going to be devastated. You know, it will not be real sadness. It will not be real issues. You know, they will not have to pay more attention to me. In fact, the attention that I felt like I will not give my family, I won't be, even be able to give them at all, at all. It will not be them giving me attention. So many things are going to change. So why am I, so why am I feeling so sad at the thought of another child when it could be worse? And it really helped me, even though somewhere in my head I was like, well, I don't have to have cancer, neither do I have to have a baby, okay? There's, there's an in-between. There's an in-between, please. <laughs> You know, even though I was thinking that, I still felt like, you know, it, she made sense. It was just, I think basically what she just taught me is to be thankful 
for where I am right now and be thank if I if I have a baby or if I if I had gotten pregnant, be thankful for it as well because it could have been anything else. It could have been worse, you know. So yeah, it actually helps me move on. And after she talked to me, after I took her advice and all that, and I moved on. The next day or two days later, yeah, two days later, my period came. Okay, and I was like, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. And all my promises to God <laughs> about how. If I'm not pregnant, I will rush the next day. I will go and go and get my IUD put back or I'll go and do the surgery. Even with all my promises, I'm still here today to tell you that I know they hear what. <laughs> I know they hear what. But anyway, you guys, I don't think um, it's ever going to happen again like that. Um, I'm more careful now. But aside being more careful now, like I said, I'm going to get my IUD put in just so that I'm sure that no IOD. I'm going to get um, the tube cutting surgery. I'm going to ask my daughter about it and just decide. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed my little gist. Is it little? I don't know. Let me know. If you enjoyed this gist, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I feel like I don't even say that enough and I need to change that, okay? It, that needs to change, okay? And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.